It's a puzzle time, and this one is more perplexing than teaching a goldfish how to play chess. You're presented with 4x4 matrix. One of the values in matrix is missing. The values that's there are, starting with row 1, are 7, 2, 1, and 9. Row 2 has 8, 5, 0, and 3. Row 3 has numbers 4, 3, 1, and 7. And row 4 has numbers 5, 2, 0, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 2. Choice C, 3. And choice D, 4. Examine this problem closely to see if you can get to the correct solution. Are you ready? Let's dive and unravel this enigma together. I'll share with you my solution, and obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. As usual, the trick to solve these types of challenges is to detect the pattern. To help us detect the pattern, let's break down the 4x4 matrix into columns and rows. Let's number rows as 1, 2, 3, and 4, and let's number the columns as A, B, C, and D. What's unusual about this puzzle is that values in column C define the sign for math operation. The value 1 is equivalent of addition, and value 0 is an equivalent of subtraction. Once you know this rule, you can calculate the value in column D based on the math operations to the values in columns A and B. Let's look at the example. To make it easy, let's substitute the numbers in column C with the math operations. The operation for row 1 would be plus, which is addition. For row 2 would be sign of minus, which is subtraction. For row 3 plus again, and for row 4 minus. To calculate the values in row 1, we need to add 7 plus 2, and the result would be equal to 9. Value for row 2 is calculated as 8 minus 5 and equals to 3. For row 3, 4 plus 3 equals 7. Let's do the math now for the missing value. 5 minus 2 equals 3. So the correct answer here is choice C, 3. Let's dive into an amazing cognitive assessment test question that not only enhances your analytical abilities, but also improves your valuable problem-solving skills you can apply to solve real-life problems. You're presented with three squares, and you need to determine which square comes next? The next square should be selected out of four possible choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the solution. Well, after close examination of all the choices, I think I got my answer. And I'm ready to unravel the problem-solving techniques together with you. I also think I have a tip for you on how to solve these types of challenges and obviously invite you to share your brilliant ideas on how to solve it in comments so we can all learn. Our goal is to get to the solution in four simple steps. Let's start with the step one. In step one, we need to analyze the original sequence of squares to find the pattern. Let's take a close look at what we have. Even though all objects are squares, the two squares are four by four and the third square is 5 by 5. We also can see that all shapes have alternating colors. But you can see that the first shape starts with the darker square in the upper left corner, and the second square starts with the lighter square in the upper left corner. Now it's time to go to the step 2. In step 2, we need to visualize the final shape. Based on what we've just learned, our final shape should be 5 by 5 in size, with alternating colors and should have a lighter small square in the upper left corner. There are two choices that match this option, choices B and C. Let's jump to step 3 and eliminate the incorrect options. Let's closely look at options B and C to examine options that are incorrect. As you can see, the option C is incorrect, because the choice D2 is the extra dark object, which creates a cross. And this leads us to step 4, where we need to verify our answer. Once we've determined that what we believe is the final shape, let's double check it by comparing to the provided choices and ensure that it matches the pattern and colors to complete the shape. As you might have guessed, the correct answer here is choice B because it matches all the criteria 
and continues the sequence. And now it's time for you to grab your thinking goggles. I have a question for you that you need to solve on your own. And the question is so intricate, Sherlock Holmes would need a cheat sheet. You're presented with two diamonds. Each diamond has four numbers inside. In the first diamond, which is on the left, the numbers are 8, 6, 2, and 4. And in the second diamond on the right, the numbers are 5, 2, 2, and then comes the missing number, which you need to calculate and select out of four possible choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 3. Choice C, 5. And last but not least, choice D, 7. Take on this challenge alone, and when you've emerged victorious, share your triumph in comments. I have full confidence that you can do it. Thanks for participating, and good luck solving this challenge. Prepare to tackle this intriguing assessment test question, designed not just to test your mental math abilities, but also to foster your analytical skills, which you can use in the day-to-day -day life. You need to determine the missing number, which is located on the top of the pyramid. The other numbers in the pyramid are 8 and 28 in the second row, 4, 4, and 7 in the third row, and 3, 1, 4, and 3 in the fourth row. You need to calculate the missing number and select it out of four possible choices. Choice A, 26. Choice B, 30. Choice C, 32. And last but not least, choice D, 36. Let me give you a hint. Consider that I might be trying to mislead you by the way I present the information. Maybe there is another alternative look and how you can look at this data. Are you ready? I think I found my answer and I am thrilled to compare it with your solution. Let's continue so we can examine our strategies step by step. And if your brilliant approach is better or more efficient, don't hesitate to let us know in comments. Remember how I presented the information to you? I started from the top and went to the bottom. But in fact, you need to start from the low-level numbers and apply math operations to the low-line numbers to calculate the higher-level numbers. To confuse you even more, there are two math operations are alternating in the calculations, addition and multiplication. Let's look at the example so you get better understanding. Let's look at the numbers in the bottom left corner. 3 plus 1 equals 4. But 1 multiplied by 4 equals 4. Remember I told you that addition and multiplication are alternating. So the next one would be addition again. 4 plus 3 equals 7. Let's go to the row 2. 4 plus 4 equals 8. But 4 multiplied by 7 equals 28. So to calculate the top number, we need to add 8 and 28 to get to the final result of this, 36. So the correct answer here is choice D, 36. Get ready for a mind-bending question that will make you question your own existence. Well, maybe not to that extreme, but definitely a cognitive workout. You're presented with the very simple expression. 5 minus 2 multiplied by 4 plus 7 equals question mark. And question mark is the value that you need to calculate. Once calculated, select your answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 3. Choice B, 4. Choice C, 5. And last but not least, choice D, 6. I'm going to give you a hint. Make sure to verify your answer before you move forward. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and dive into this brain teaser together. And remember, if you end up calculating a better way to solve it, please share your answer in comments. The key to solve this challenge is to determine the order of operations. You might have heard the term PEMDAS, which stands for parentheses, brackets, exponents, orders, multiplications, divisions, addition, and subtraction, which is also known as BAMDAS, and represents correct way to perform calculations. Let's apply this order to this expression. We first need to do multiplication. 2 multiplied by 4 equals 8. So the updated expression will be 5 minus 8 plus 7. The next operation is from left to right, we need to do subtraction. 5 minus 8 equals minus 3. Next step, minus 3 plus 7 equals 4. So the tip here is always remember to follow the order of operation to get the accurate result in mathematical calculations. 
the correct answer here is choice B, 4. Here is one of my favorite questions to test your analytical skills and attention to details. You need to determine which of the values is the smallest. And you're presented with five different values. The choices are A, 3 fourth, choice B, 0 0.6, choice C, 7 twelfth, choice D, 0 0.7, and last but not least, choice E, 4 fifth. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. To get to the correct answer, we need to convert all the values to the common format. You can convert all the values to decimals, or you convert all the values to fractions. It doesn't matter, but it has to be common. I chose decimal format. 3 fourths in decimal is 0 0.75. 0 0.6 is 0 0.6 and 7 12th is 0 0.583. 0 0.7 has the same value, and 4 fifth is 0 0.8. Now you can easily see that the smallest value is choice C, 7 12th, which is approximately as 0 0.58333. Did you get to the similar solution? If not, please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. And now I have a question for you to practice your skills. You would need to solve it on your own and post your answer in comments so I can give you my feedback. I'm sure you've got this. Here's the problem that you need to solve. You're presented with the 3x3 three three matrix. Matrix consists of large squares. Each large square has 4 small squares inside. There are 8 squares presented and 9 square is missing. You need to determine and select the missing square out of 4 possible choices. Choices A, B, C and D. Take a shot at this question independently, and when you're done, share your answer in comments. I'm excited to see your response and provide feedback. Thanks for participating, and may the odds be in your favor. Let's dive into the world of letters with this amazingly tricky question that not only evaluates your English alphabet knowledge, but also tests your analytical skills and your strategies for tackling challenges effectively. You're presented with 3x3 three three matrix. The matrix has letters inside. The first row has letters A, B, and D. The second row has letters B, D, and F. And then the third row has letters D, F, and then comes the missing letter, which you need to select out of four possible choices. Choice A, H. Choice B, D. Choice C, F. And last but not least, choice D, K. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. I mentioned that this question is a little tricky, so let me give you a hint. Take a close look and consider why would some boxes, some squares in the matrix would be in gray and some would be in white. Was it helpful? I hope it was. I've unlocked my answer and I'm excited to unveil some hints for you to share the answer. Let's explore the solution together. And obviously, if you've came up with the different and more creative alternative solution or tips how to solve these types of challenges effectively, make sure to post them in comments. To answer this question correctly, let's look at our matrix from a little different dimension. Each letter here corresponds to a specific place in the alphabet, which can be represented by the number. For example, letter A equals 1, letter B 2, C 3, and etc. If we follow this logic, we can replace all letters in all three rows with the numbers. So for the first row, the numbers will be 1, 2, and 4. For the second row, the numbers would be 2, 4, and 6. And for the third row, the numbers will be 4 and 6, and that would be the missing number. The next step is to determine what's happening with the numbers and how to calculate the missing number. Remember I gave you a hint? Hope you figured it out because numbers in the white squares here are the result of addition of numbers in the gray squares. Let's look at the example. For example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. 4 plus 2 equals 6. This is how the numbers in the white squares of the second row are calculated. 2 plus 4 equals 6. This is the result of the calculation in the third row, which would mean that the missing number on the intersection of 4 and 4 will be calculated as addition of 4 plus 4, which would be equal to 8. So the correct answer here is choice A, H, because H is the letter that corresponds to the number 8. 
Here's a very interesting question where you need to calculate the missing number. You are presented with four circles. Each circle is of a different color. The first circle has number one inside of it. Second circle has number two. Third circle has number five inside. And last circle has the missing number represented by the question mark. You need to calculate and select final answer out of four possible choices. Choice A, 24. Choice B, 26. Choice C, 16. And last but not least, choice D, 20. Take a close look to see if you can calculate the final answer. Are you ready? I hope you found the answer because it's so easy to calculate. Let's move forward so I can share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I keep repeating myself when I say that finding pattern is the key to solve this challenge. And the pattern here is that the next number is calculated as a square value of the previous number plus 1. Let's look at the example. The first number is given, which is 1. Second number is calculated as 1 square plus 1 and equals 2. The third number is calculated as 2 square plus 1 and equals 5. Which means that the missing number is calculated as 5 square, which would be equal to 25, plus 1, which would be equal to 26. So the correct answer here is choice B, 26. Did you get to the same answer? If not, please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you for helping us to become one of the largest YouTube channels to help people become smarter, increase your IQ, and to pass any test. If the content of this video was helpful, please make sure to click the like button to help YouTube algorithm promote this video and help other people to find it faster. Giving us a like is also a way for you to tell us that you need more content like this, and when you tell us, we will deliver it for you in the future. For links to free and premium resources, please check the description and comments of this video. You can also go directly to our website, howtoanalyzedata.net, to download the materials related to this topic. I really appreciate your endorsement, support, and patronage of this channel. And thank you for considering to become a member and considering to subscribe. Please leave feedback, suggestions, or corrections in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.